Hey everybody, today I want to talk about oxalates. Before I do, funny little story, I just recorded this whole video and realised that I didn't have the microphone on, so the recording looked beautiful of me talking, blah, 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 but you couldn't hear anything, so oh, love your technology. Anyway, here I go again, hopefully second time round, this video is going to be punchy and to the point. <laughs> Um, okay, so oxalates, you may have heard of them, you may have not. Oxalates are actually really common. Um, you probably eat them every day. They're are found or made inside plants and so they're found in like a whole heap of plant foods especially a lot of your leafy greens are really high in oxalates. Your body also produces them. Um, with different metabolic processes, including when you're, say, converting a nutrients like vitamin C into a usable form, your body's actually producing oxalates. So first of all, I want to say oxalates, totally normal, totally healthy process, but things can become um, out of whack. So if you've got certain body systems that become imbalanced, you can actually have an excess buildup of oxalates in your system, which can lead to all sorts of symptoms and even like connected to different health conditions and diseases. So some of these things to look out for. So if you're listening or as you're listening to this video, just think about, you know, this combination of symptoms. And if you're like, oh yeah, I do have a few of those. Um, there may be uh, oxalate sensitivity as part of your overall health history or case. Um, so kidney stones, super common. Also joint pain and body pain, especially if you've maybe been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or you have no reason to be in pain in terms of like an injury. Think about oxalates being high in your system. Um, also pain in the bladder and vaginal area, super common um, with oxalate sensitivity. So you might have um, a burning when you when you urinate or even pain in your sort of urethra bladder area. Um, especially if you've gone to the GP, they run tests and they're like, hmm, no, there's no UTI, there's no bacterial infections. Um, don't take the antibiotics because it's highly likely that you actually just have an oxalate sensitivity. Um, also, if you have vaginal pain, um, it's red, inflamed, irritated, and it doesn't mean that you act if you necessarily have an STI or thrush or bacterial vaginosis, it could actually be that your body's reacting to oxalates and it can show up in that sensitive area. Um, gut issues, really common, bloating, pain, um, burning on bowel movements, especially like diarrhea. A lot of people kind of get that urgent diarrhea and it just like burns through them as they poo. Um, as, um, a lot of clients who have had oxalate sensitivity also um, <sighs> say that they feel like they have fire in their belly. Um, and a couple of other ones, gum inflammation, super common, circulation issues, and also irregular heartbeat. So if you've, you know, had these uh, feeling like you've had these heart issues, you've done ECG tests, nothing's coming back, heart is fine, you might want to start thinking about oxalate sensitivity or maybe some other food um, chemical sensitivity. Alrighty, so what actually causes oxalate sensitivity? Because as I mentioned before, oxalates are not bad, they're in lots of food, your body produces them, but there are a few key areas um, or imbalances in the body that can actually then cause an oxalate sensitivity. So one of those is candida. So candida is a yeast infection. Um, yeast is part of your normal flora, but if it starts overgrowing, it can cause issues and candida can cause an oxalate sensitivity because it literally produces oxalate. So your bucket just gets full if you're, if you have a lot of candida producing oxalates. Mold, it can also cause oxalate sensitivity, just like candida. Mold is a fungi um, and it can cause a lot of issues for some people. So these mycotoxins uh, or these spores that mold produce that float around in the air, if you're constantly breathing in mold and you're quite susceptible to mold, um, those mold spores can actually get stuck in your fat tissues and start spewing out oxalates. So again bucket gets full. Um, microbiome depletion. So you've got some really essential beneficial bacteria that if they become depleted, often due to, I don't know, antibiotics, stress, um, it's toxins, all that sort of stuff. If it becomes depleted, then uh, this special bacteria 
uh, or there's a type of bacteria that actually helps to break down and clear oxalates from the body. So if your microbiome is depleted, then you might not be able to do that effectively. Similar to your detox pathways, so your liver's part of clearing oxalates from your body. If liver's not working so well, you can have a buildup of oxalates in your system. Um, in a conjunction with the liver, so your liver actually produces bile also. Bile gets stored in your gallbladder. It then squirts out into your small intestines and it is a digestive juice that helps to break down fats. Now, if you're not producing bile efficiently, you're not able to actually break down and assimilate fats into your system. And what will happen is that un digested fat actually clings on to calcium, which is a nutrient that you are most likely eating. Um, and this becomes an issue for oxalates because you need calcium in your gut to be able to bind onto oxalates that you're eating, body producing, other things are producing, so you can actually clear it from your system. If that calcium isn't there, there's nothing to really bind onto the oxalate, so it just ends up recirculating back into your system. Um, so bile issues alongside of that, you might just not be eating much calcium in your diet, that can also lead to an oxalate sensitivity. And last but not least, uh, probably like one of the deeper root causes that actually cause all these other body systems to go out of whack or these infections to overgrow in the first place is nervous system dysregulation. So you've got your nervous system, um, basically like you've got your brain, all these nerves connecting down to the rest of your body. Your brain is constantly taking in information from your external world, sending those signals down to your body. If um, your nervous system becomes dysregulated, then literally, literally any body system can then become um, dysregulated and start burning out or breaking down. So your liver can start having issues. Your uh, gut can start having issues. Your um, gallbladder and bile production can start having issues. And so nervous, your nervous system, like there's two main ways that the nervous system becomes dysregulated. One is inflammation. So all the things I kind of mentioned earlier. The other one is actually dysfunctional beliefs. So again, nervous system connected to the brain connected to everything that is filtering into your mind stress or you know dysfunctional beliefs or uh, dysfunctional stories that you're creating about yourself and about your existence in the world can absolutely cause a stressed out nervous system which then can dysregulate your nervous system and lead to all sorts of issues um, so you might have listened to the root causes and were like, oh, that sounds really complex. Is it even possible to heal? Maybe it feels impossible, but there is a way. Um, we have a beautiful holistic, we call it the ending body burnout method that really looks at all these root causes and actually transforms them so that your body can heal and so that you don't have to be a sensitive soul anymore. You don't have to... Um, you know, we can get rid of oxalate sensitivity. You can eat foods again. You don't have to live your life on a restricted diet. Um, now, you might have noticed that I didn't mention anything about eating foods high in oxalates as being a root cause. And that's because I don't believe it is. Like, there are so many healthy foods that are high in oxalates. So it's, they're not bad. It's just that if you've got these imbalances, which are then leading to oxalate sensitivity for a short period of time I would usually advise going on a low oxalate diet so that you can actually help to reduce your overall load and just help reset metabolic processes that can help clear oxalates as you're working on the root causes. So um, I love to use uh, elimination diets to as a test and um, it's free. <laughs> it does require a little bit of time and preparation. But um, if you're kind of suspecting that, oh, I might have a, an oxalate sensitivity, like with all the different symptoms I've been talking about and the different root causes, then you can actually do a low oxalate diet to see if your symptoms improve on it. And if it does, then it is showing that you have an oxalate sensitivity. Unlike other chemical sensitivity diets, uh, say, for example, the low histamine diet. I've talked about that before in a past blog. Um, I did a whole webinar around it, actually. Um, if you want the link to it, it's free, but I don't have it 
um, put up anywhere. So just let me know and I'll send you the link. Um, but anyway, when clients go on low histamine diets, literally within a week or two, most of them have significant improvements in their symptoms. Unfortunately, the low oxalate diet isn't like that. Um, it usually takes about three months to actually clear oxalates from your body for you to then feel an improvement. Now, if it's like three months, that's like so long. There is a, a very easy and inexpensive urine functional medicine lab test that can measure oxalates in your body. So that's always another option too. You don't have to do the full on low oxalate diet to diagnose an oxalate sensitivity. You can literally do the test, then do the diet, see if you improve, work on the root causes. Um, okay, so there are a whole bunch of foods that are high in oxalates. Um, just because I don't want to bore you, <laughs> I'll just rattle off some of like the highest ones. And as I am talking about these foods, just kind of think about your body. And if you've noticed different reactions to foods, especially healthy foods, just take note. Uh, if you're reacting to maybe three, four, five or more of these foods, I'd probably start thinking about maybe low um, oxalate sensitivity as being part of your overall health history. Um, okay, so in the vegetable range, there's beets, so beetroot, carrots, celery, leafy salad greens, green beans, kale, rhubarb, potatoes, spinach, sweet potato and Swiss chard are all high, very high in oxalates. And how good are they all? Like they're all your good, beautiful, healthy foods. Um, fruits, so citrus fruits, figs, gooseberries, guava, kiwi, pomegranate, raspberries, blackberries and star fruit star fruit or high in oxalates um nuts and seeds almonds peanuts pecan hazelnuts kind of like most of your nuts and seeds actually are quite high in oxalates then you've got grains and legumes so most beans and legumes are high in oxalates and some grains that are super high um, are amaranth buckwheat and quinoa and then lastly, you've got um, like all your herbs and spices. And again, because herbs and spices are very potent um, medicines, even food is medicine, it often these more potent plant foods are high in oxalates. So common ones are allspice, cinnamon, clove, cumin, ginger, onion, powder, and turmeric. And like, it's pretty crazy. Hey, people take supplements with turmeric. So if you've ever taken a supplement with turmeric and in and have felt more pain rather than less pain maybe you may have an oxalate sensitivity okay so if you've read all that and you're like what the heck do I even eat that just sounds impossible um never fear like if you're serious about doing this we actually have created a whole heap of meal plans and heaps of recipes all around the low oxalate diet um and many of our other well all of our other short-term healing diets um these uh can be accessed in our ending body burnout method uh which is for our clients um if it's something that you're interested interested in in looking at and to get more support around then just like reach out send me a dm or whatever um and i'll give you more information about that so after you just like really quickly after you've avoided all those foods for a few months um if you've kind of skipped or haven't done the lab test to look at oxalates in your system um then it's time to bring foods back in so if you actually notice that doing the low oxalate diet there's no difference in your symptoms you probably don't have an oxalate sensitivity that was a waste of three months <laughs> not really it's just ticking things off it's like done that that's not an issue done that that's not an issue oh I did that that was a big issue um even if after three months you haven't felt any improvement still bring the foods back in and if you have a flare-up then it's highly likely that you have an oxalate sensitivity or maybe even just sensitive to like a specific food on the avoid list um if you have had improvements on the low oxalate diet and you haven't yet worked on root causes, I would highly recommend you start doing root cause work. Otherwise, you will be stuck on a restricted diet for the rest of your life. And what I find too, when people start doing these elimination diets um, and they stay on them long term, they often paint themselves into a corner where, uh, you know, it's you're like left with five foods to eat, for example, you just become more and more and more sensitive to foods. So 
do this. Like if you want to try out this low oxalate diet on your own, do it cautiously. Don't do it long term, especially if you're feeling better on it. You definitely want to work with a practitioner who understands the holistic approach, approach and all the root causes that go um, that cause body systems to become imbalanced and that lead to food sensitivities so that you can not over only overcome these food sensitivities but you can eat all the foods and have like awesome health long term so if that's something that you're interested in you can actually book in for a free discovery call i'll pop a link underneath this video um or if you're a keen beanie you're like i need this yes i'm so excited you can actually book straight in for a connect the dots initial consult um, i'm usually like a month or two booked out occasionally i might have an earlier spot pop up so if you're just like yep i need to do this um i would book in straight away otherwise it might be months and months and months before we can actually start work on your beautiful body Alrighty, I'm going to see you now. <laughs> Bye.